Hey there, it's Tom Corson Knowles, and welcome today to the Motivation and Success Podcast Show. We have a very special guest for you. His name is Steve Scott, and Steve is a best selling author of Kindle ebooks and has been incredibly successful in just a few months, I think just about a year uh, since he published his first book on Kindle, and he's doing really well with it, earning some incredible income, and he's ranked one of the top 50. Uh, business and investing authors on, on Amazon Kindle. Uh, we both are. We kind of trade spots here and there in the top 50 uh, Amazon Kindle business authors uh, ranking. But Steve's just an incredible guy. You know, I've reached out to a lot of uh, best-selling Kindle authors out there, and you know, some of them, some of them not so nice. Some of them, you know, not not the greatest reaction uh, to wanting to be interviewed. But Steve is just the kindest, sweetest, most caring guy like you'll ever meet. Like he's just so down to earth and. So humble and just a really cool, awesome guy. I think you're gonna love the interview today. He's got some great tips, and uh, he's so humble about it. But like, literally, like this this interview with Steve is, is one of the best by far that we've done so far. And uh, you know, he's low key, but his information is so incredible, so powerful. And if you apply his strategies, you know, you are just gonna find incredible uh, increases in your sales on Kindle. So you're gonna love it. Make sure you have your pen, your paper, your notebook, your journal. Take great notes. You are gonna love this interview. Okay, enjoy. Well, Steve, thanks so much for being with us today on the Motivation and Success Podcast show. You know, thanks so much for offering to share with us, you know, tips for authors and, and marketers to, you know, really dominate uh, their sales on the Kindle store. Can you share with us, you know, how did you get started as an author? Uh, basically, I've had a blog, uh, Steve Scott's site for, uh, actually, tomorrow's going to be my three-year anniversary. So I've had that blog for, for three years now. And like many people, I was just trying to find different ways to promote the blog. And I basically got into Kindle just as a, another avenue for um, kind of reaching a whole new audience. So I put one book up there in February, and that didn't really do anything. And then in June, I put a second book up there. And from promoting the, the second book, I actually started getting sales from the first book. And from there, I saw that I was making it some decent sales. So I decided to really kind of attack it with all I've got. And so basically, bottom line is I just use it as a promotional tool. Now I'm actually seeing it as an income generating strategy. Mm-hmm. Awesome, really cool. So, so originally you're just a blogger, and, and what do you blog about? Uh, basically, internet marketing and spe- with this, uh, specifically authority affiliate marketing, because I've been pretty much making a full time income since 2005 through affiliate marketing. So, I've been trying to build a brand around the idea that you should build one site and really concentrate on on scaling that up and turning that into a whole uh, full time income. Mm-hmm. Awesome, awesome. So you're basically teaching other bloggers or people out there who want to make money from home, you know, how to do affiliate marketing uh, and sell products online. Yeah, pretty much. That's uh, exactly. Awesome, cool. So then, so then you started writing books, and, and you write books about exactly that same topic. Uh, yeah, I started out actually. My second book is about authority affiliate marketing. It didn't really do as well as I thought it'd be, and actually got a couple of um, negative reviews, but. There was actually the negative reviews taught me kind of the importance of instead of trying to write like one large product or uh, one large ebook, and you take a one you take a specific topic and you try narrowing it down and creating individual books about specific parts of running a business. Mm-hmm. So with my third one, I kind of took the idea of how to find ideas to write for ebooks, and since then I'm, every single book has been about writing something pretty specific and focused. Mm-hmm. So you got really, really niche ebooks that are, you know, kind of shorter ebooks, but they're really niche and really focused on one subject. Yeah, exactly. Like one of them talks about how to actually make money through creating a uh, product review videos through YouTube and stuff like that. Uh-huh. Wow. So it's really just like a, like a, it's kind of like a blog post, but just a really longer, more detailed, more explanation of a blog post and you kind of put into an ebook. Exactly. I try to take the idea of blogging and turning it into a, a publishing platform. So instead of trying to solve everyone's problems with just one book, you just, you know, concentrate in that one kind of like itch that people have to scratch and solve that problem through mm-hmm. just through a, a Kindle book. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So, uh, you know, how do you go about marketing your books? I mean, I know I've, I've read some of your books and you talk about kind of even before you write the book, you have kind of a marketing plan and you do a lot of marketing research ahead of time. So what do you look for in a niche before you write a book on a topic? Uh, basically, the for for me, the litmus test is I, I know internet marketing and uh, ebook publishing. I know off the top of my head that's pretty profitable. But if someone wanted to completely start over and wanted to find a niche, I would say f- try to find a topic and on Amazon find anything with a bestseller ranking of twenty thousand or below. That's about you know five books a day. It doesn't sound like a lot, but if you can find one market where people are spending that kind of money, then you can just 
rinse and repeat, keep on writing books and just really specialize on each topic. But the key is to make sure that people are spending money. Now, in one of my books, I use the example of, I think it was hairstyles. And I actually looked and I couldn't find one book in that the entire Amazon marketplace that had under 100,000 bestseller rankings. So that was, you know, maybe half a sale a day. So my, my point was you shouldn't actually really go into that specific market because it just wouldn't make financial sense of right stuff that no one is buying. Mm -hmm. And I guess, I guess from there, just you want to make sure people are spending money, bottom line. Mm -hmm. And um, also, I, I, would, I would think it's important that you have to be some sort of authority in that particular topic, or at least have some experience writing content about that particular topic, or at least a willingness to learn everything you can about that topic. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. You got to be able to write some good quality books. I mean, that's, at the end of the day, you have to have good quality. You have to be able to help your readers. You know, what I talk about is all the time is like, you know, when you're, and I'm writing a book, it's all about, you know, I want to solve a problem for my readers. Like you talked yes. about, you know, like maybe they don't, they have a blog, but they don't want really to get traffic. So, you know, I'll write a blog to teach them, or a book on how to teach them how to do that. They, they have got a problem and you have to solve that problem with a nonfiction book. Absolutely. No, I, I think it's definitely, you want to, you want to really address every type of question that they would have with that particular problem and, mm -hmm. and do your best to uh, solve it in what I like to think is a step-by-step -step format, not just like, not just tell them what to do, actually show them step by step how to actually do it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah, that's really that's really important too. Is that you know not like you said step by step. It's not just like you know here's everything I know about this subject because it could be you know 500 pages long and people would be like so confused by it, right? So you really have to make it like so simple and like almost like you're talking to like a six year old, right? Like really simple. Here's the first thing you do. Here's the second thing you do, and just make it easy for people to to get that information. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Very cool. So, you know, tell us about like, let's say you're coming out with a book today, you know, what would you do to market that book? You know, what's your marketing plan? How do you promote your books? Uh, to be perfectly honest, and I, we talked about this before we got on the, uh, the actual recording, is um, I don't really believe in a, a huge marketing plan. I think Amazon really does most of it for you. I probably just like what you do. I do the KDB select launch. So I launch it for free for three to five days and I already have a blog base so that definitely helps and I honestly feel I couldn't get I wouldn't be where I am today without the people I've had that read my blogs and help me out but I would say really concentrate on a quality free launch try to get as many reviews as possible I think that's the most important thing you try to get people to review it and I'm, every time I, I release a, a new Kindle book I put it on my blog and I ask for help with people downloading it leaving a review, anything they can do to help out. And since I've had a prior experience of years before that of giving good content, then I think a lot of people are willing to come to the bat and actually help me out with every, every future book. But I would say even if you're, you're starting over, you want to build some sort of plat uh, blogging platform or some sort of platform, either it's a podcast, YouTube, anything where you're giving away free content ahead of time. And then once you actually start releasing your books, release it for free through KDB Select and try to basically Try to get as many reviews as possible without, you know, doing any sort of dodgy things like um, review swapping or like, pay, God forbid, don't pay for reviews, stuff like that. Yeah. Just make sure you're on the up and up and just release it for free and then try to get people to review it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Very cool. So, uh, you know, uh, so, so you've got this big platform that's following. Can you tell us like how big your blog is, how many followers you have or readers? Um, I get about, I've really almost semi-retired from blogging to the point where I'm just really Using Kindle books, and I'm actually starting a whole authority site project uh, for that blog, at, and actually the next couple of weeks. But um, I get about yeah, like I said, I got about 50, 500 visitors a day, mm -hmm. and I have about 22,000 Twitter subscribers. So I think I, I still have a lot of residual people that still check it out, and I've networked with I would say at least you know a couple dozen other bloggers that are willing to help me out whenever I, I ask them to. Mm -hmm. So it, it's a pretty solid uh, platform, mm -hmm. and. I, it, I, I know it's hard for people to, uh, when they're just starting out, to hear that sort of thing, but you, you definitely want to have something substantial before you actually start publishing Kindle books or, or at least start networking like crazy with other people in your niche. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. You, you've got to build relationships. Like with any business, you have to have relationships. And whether it's through blogging, through other bloggers, through the podcast show, YouTube, Kindle books, whatever, like you have to have relationships out there. So that people can support you and what you're up to. Otherwise, you're not going to get any sales because no one's going to even know who you are. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. Cool. So, you know, what else do you do, um, you know, when you're marketing your books? I mean, is it really just that simple? I mean, you just post it on 
You post it for free, you post it on your blog, that's it? Yeah, um, actually I did, for the first couple I really did pound the pavement and I would actually recommend this to people who start out, but there's a whole bunch of websites and actually I don't have them off the top of my head, but I know there's a bunch of websites where you can post a freebie Kindle book on there. And initially I did post it to a couple websites and then I think it was my fourth or fifth book, no, sorry, more of my fifth or sixth book where I just started not doing those websites and seeing how the download numbers are affected. And I really found that, that really going to all these different websites didn't help as much as I thought it would be. But I would say for anyone getting started, you definitely want to find as many places as you can that post it for free. Obviously, I started with Pat Flynn's uh, Facebook group. Um, shoot. I, I guess if you have show notes, I'll, I'll, I'll send you a couple of links, uh, Tom and the ones I actually have in my notes, I'm not too. Sh I'm, I'm pretty sure you know them. I just off the top of my head, I'm not too sure what they are. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. But, I've got the I've got show notes here, so I'll make sure everyone's got the links to all those free promo sites that promote the free books, and also to Pat Flynn's Facebook group, which is a really cool group. Yeah, definitely. Like I, I, I did that. I just found it didn't really work for me personally. But I think anyone who doesn't have a plat blogging platform, you want to get as many free downloads as possible. Just put it as many people. Put it in the hands of as many people as you can, and I think those free downloads really do help. Mm -hmm. Definitely, that's so true. And I think what's really important for people to understand is that you know maybe you've only got like a hundred people that download your book that you know maybe on Twitter or Facebook, your friends or family, right? But Amazon's going to promote your book for you, like you talked about before the interview. And so if you've got a hundred downloads, then Amazon's going to give you another couple hundred downloads or more, thousands, right? So the the whole key is to get the momentum, the initial momentum going, and then Amazon kind of takes it from there. Yeah, exactly. And really, they, I would say they do 95% of, the, of the marketing. It's just you have to give that kind of, you basically have to prime the pump. You have to juice it and just get, get it going. Exactly. Exactly. So true. you got to prime the pump. So let's talk about, like if someone's brand new, they, they don't have a blog, they don't have any kind of platform, they've never even written a book yet, but they want to come and, and write a Kindle book and, and succeed in this industry. You know, what, would, what were the things that you did when you first started your blog to really prime that pump, to get followers, to, to attract attention? You know, to get people you know interested in the work that you're doing. What what kind of things were you doing back then when you were brand new? Uh, I made a mistake. Literally, I lost a year of my whole blog just by writing about everything, which is a terrible mistake. I wrote about lifestyle design, personal development, physical fitness, making money. It was just it was all over the map, and that was that was the worst thing you could possibly do with a website. I would say, um, for instance, I'm starting a, a brand new site about developing habits. Like you want to actually niche it down to the point where you're really just focused on one topic and just writing about everything having to do with that one topic and eventually you'll find an audience obviously there's a lot of things you can do you can do like the um, guest posting you can comment other blogs but you, you should comment other blogs not as a traffic generation strategy as more of a networking opening the door kind of meeting the the owner of the blog and kind of being regarded as someone who shares valuable information Mm -hmm. So beyond that, you, you could, um, I would say every single article, you should try emphasizing a keyword, obviously using the Google uh, keyword tool. And just over time, it's, it's just like burp a little bit at a time, and eventually you will build a large uh, blog, blogging audience. It's really the, the, the simplified version of that. It requires a lot of effort, obviously. But um, mm -hmm. you just want to basically reach out to other bloggers and try to just build up your audience over time. Obviously, mm -hmm. I'm sorry, the one thing I did forget is obviously write great content. That That's the, the key there. You really have to write something that really resonates and actually provide solutions to people's problems, just like you would with the Kindle book. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, so true, so true. That's, you got a lot of great advice right there. I just want to repeat it. You know, first of all, you said, you know, you got to niche it down and choose, just choose one topic. You know, that's a big mistake a lot of people make. You know, like if, for fiction authors, it's obvious, right? Like if you have a fiction book and it does really well, you know, everyone will turn that into a series. Like it's a no-brainer because you know, the people who wrote your, read your first book in the series are going to be the second and third and fourth and sixth and so on, right? Exactly. But with nonfiction, a lot of authors don't think about that. They think, oh, well, I wrote one book on, you know, on weight loss. That's all I need, right? Well, no, maybe people want to know more strategies and tools and tips for weight loss. So if that book does really well, then you ought to be turning more books in that niche, right? Definitely, absolutely. Yeah. Because it's like the market's talking um, to you. I'm sorry, go ahead. It's like the market's talking to you. They're telling you, hey, we like this. You know, give us more of that. And a lot of people will go, well, I don't want to write about that anymore. I'm going to write about something different. Right? Yeah. <laughs> it's a big mistake. I would, say, I would say one thing, a huge mistake I see people make um, also is they don't, they don't take all their books and actually fill out the whole author central account. So they basically have a book, but there's nothing to get them to buy other books. So I would say if you go to authorcentral.amazon.com, 
actually fill out kind of an elevator pitch, talk about how you're in a position to help them, and list all your books there. And that's al that almost acts as its own separate blog where you can just direct people to your Amazon author page and people have a chance to buy more books from you. Mm -hmm. It's a, that one simple step can really have an amazing impact on your ability to, to sell more uh, e-books. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely. Well, I know, how many books do you have out right now, Steve? Um, I have eight plus. I just did a bundle the other day where it's, uh, three of the books can be bought for the price of two. Uh -huh. And I'm working on my tenth one right now. So I'm not too sure if that's eight, eight or nine, but I like to say nine since there's nine listings. Okay, gotcha. Very cool. So you know, I think that's also really important that people learn as well is that you, know, you don't just have one book. Right? It's not just like you wrote like this one thing about blogging and that's all you ever have. You've got multiple books because you understand the value of having you know, multiple resources out there for people to find. Like, like every listing you have on Amazon is another way that people can find you and search or on Google or whatever, right? Absolutely. And Amazon is a search engine, which most people don't really think of. Is if you have one piece of content, they might like that or they might not buy that, but they might buy, you know, some of the, uh, something else that you have to offer. Mm -hmm. Definitely. So that's that's really important. I think for your success as well is that you didn't just give up with one book. And I think that's another yeah. big mistake people make is they'll write one book and like, oh, it didn't sell. Like, because your first book probably didn't sell very well, did it? It actually, and if you look at the reviews, I'll be honest, it got crucified. <laughs> it got a bunch of bad reviews. Um, the, the the big mistake I made with that is I just provided a uh, 55 ways to make money online. It sounds like a good idea. But people actually want solutions. They don't want a bunch of tips. And that, that was a mistake I took from being a blogger. I thought blogging is the same thing as publishing Kindle books, where people don't mind a, a tip list, but people are paying money, do mind, and they want actual solutions. Mm -hmm. So that actually was selling pretty well for a long time. It was selling you know, anywhere from 7 to 12 copies a day. But then it got two or three reviews, and it literally destroyed sales of that overnight. So that, that was a huge mistake. But Initially, it, like I said, initially started doing well, but it, like I did learn a valuable lesson from that as far as you know, identifying a good topic and sticking to that topic and providing a, a good solution to it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, that's another. I mean, you're making so many great points, Steve. It's just awesome. Like, you know, you learn from your negative Sometimes. reviews, and I think that's really key. Is that you know, if you get a neg if I get a one or two star review, I'm actually excited about it now because I want to see like what that person says. Like, what don't they like about the book? You know, and sometimes it's like they just have a difference of opinion, and, and I'm not going to change anything I do because they just have a difference of opinion. It's no big deal. Like if you look at Harry Potter, I mean that book has like 90 some one star reviews and 88 two star reviews. Like, so you know people are going to hate you know your book no matter what it is because so many people are going to read it, not everyone's going to like it. But you talked about you know you learned from these criticisms that people were saying that maybe it wasn't the right type of book for them. Maybe you weren't detailed enough. You maybe your formatting issues or whatever. You know you have to learn from these negative reviews to improve your your work as an author. Otherwise, you're just going to stay the same. You're going to stay a new person who hasn't learned. Yeah, definitely. Actually, one thing that helped is I, I used to really take these personally, and I, I made a huge mistake. And I, I again, I don't recommend doing this. Is with the second book, I got into a flame war with the, the guy who left me a review, and that huge mistake. I thought I was right. I still think I was right, but it was a mistake to even respond to it just because mm -hmm. it made me look bad and it made me look like, like an amateur, to be honest. Mm -hmm. um, what I like to do now is every time I get a bad review, I'll go look up my favorite book, something I really feel like personally was a great book, and I look at their one-star reviews. It kind of makes me realize even what I consider the best of the best, they still have people slam it. And mm -hmm. Like you said, Harry Potter. I, love, I freaking love Harry Potter, but people, some people hate it. Right, it's so true. It's so true, and it's like it's like it's just good to know that you know you're in good company when you get a one or two star review because you're in company with these best selling books out there that have helped millions of people change their lives, right? Yeah, definitely. But pay attention to them. Like they're if they're if they're telling you that certain things aren't right or like there's something off about it, then you definitely want to at least like respond to it and not respond, but at least like correct whatever mistake that they're pointing out. Mm -hmm. Definitely, definitely for sure. So let's talk about some of the uh, obstacles or challenges that you've had along the way. Um, you know, you know what's come up for you. What's been the the hard things for you? What what struggles have you had? You know, you talked about a few of the mistakes you made, but you know, what was really difficult for you? You know, getting started as an author that you know you think other authors could benefit from your experience. I would say uh, first off, obviously, what we just talked about is the reviews, and just don't don't take it personally. Um, a great analogy I heard is keep your ego small. They're not. They're not criticizing you, they're criticizing what you've written. And there's a fine distinction there. It's not like they're saying you're a horrible person. You just, mm -hmm. perhaps they just didn't like something that you've written. Um, 
And besides, I think another obstacle is the idea of 80-20. Don't try to spend, you know, three, four weeks promoting a book and spending all the time. I would say try to get it out there. Try to make sure it's good. Promote it a little bit, but then as soon as you're done with that, get cracking on the second book and then get cracking on the third book. It's just don't get bogged down in all the details of trying to publish and just being perfect. You, you want to do your best, but then move on from that. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And you keep, you keep cranking out new books. You keep writing. You keep producing new work to help more people. Yeah. And I honestly think that's the best, the best way to get experience is just by doing it, rinse and repeat over and over and over. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. That's so true. That's so true. And, you know, when I look at my books, you know, the books I thought were going to be bestsellers and do so well, you know, some of them they just were flops and really don't sell that well. And other ones I thought, eh, this book's not going to do very well. It'll just sell like thousands of copies a month. So it's yeah. really interesting, you know, um, in hindsight to see, you know, what you what you think is going to do so well might not. And you got to just try new things and see what the market wants, see what your readers really want to read. Yeah, definitely. Mm-hmm. I think, honestly, my the favorite book I wrote probably sells – like it sells, I think third lease. It's it really didn't do as well as I thought it would, and I thought it was a great book, but no one really seemed to like it. And I think that was a mistake through my own research. I just didn't really realize that how little that topic was particularly interesting to people. So, mm-hmm. kind of you just learn by doing it and see what see, throw it against the wall and see if it sticks. Mm-hmm. Definitely, definitely for sure. So you know, as, as a blogger, I'm sure you've had tons of experience with headlines and writing headlines that really catch people's attention, right? Because that's a big part of blogging. So are you kind of using that, that same strategy for your book titles? And tell us about how you, how you work your book titles. Um, absolutely. I actually do really try to apply a, a headline strategy with the book titles. Um, I, I use variations. I always try to at least make sure there's one major keyword there. Again, the Google keyword tool. I try to find one that has a lot of searches for it. So I know that there's people looking for it, not just on Amazon, but also on uh, Google as well. So I try to incorporate a keyword there, and I also try to have – kind of attention grabber like um for instance one of my blog uh, one of my ebooks is my blog traffic sucks and that's that's basically a, a thought that pretty much if you're a blogger and you're looking at your stats it's that's i know i did it like it's just a, a thought that runs through your head so i try to try to get into the conversation that goes into people's heads and they just obviously use like different types of headline formulas i, I try to, to come up with something new with every headline but um, you definitely want to have some sort of hook. You want something that's going to get people's attentions with the act, with the title itself. Mm-hmm. Um, a good resource that actually um, I don't have the again I'll uh, show notes it uh, tell to you. But uh, John Morrow's headline formulas. I use a lot of variations of that. Uh, that's a free ebook that he sells in exchange for an email. Um, not sell, sorry. It's a free he- ebook he offers in exchange for an email to address um, his great content, but. That kind of teaches you how to actually write good headlines, and you take just that idea and try to put that into a blog title. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you, you don't want to do stuff like how to make money online. Like you, you don't want to just go for the simple kind of boring headlines. You want to have something that really stands out. Right. And it uses use as many emotions as you can. Try to try to get what people are thinking. Definitely, it's got to grab people's attention, like you said, and it's got to have that hook. So, can you explain to us what a hook is? Because I think a lot of people who aren't in like media or marketing don't really understand that term. Um, the way I define it, a hook is just kind of the angle of the book. For instance, if you're like the former example of blog traffic, I'm not just talking about blog traffic. I, I'm talking about like eight simple steps to yada, yada, yada. If, if you want to find like the actual what problem you're going to solve, you're not just trying. It goes back to you're not, not trying to solve all these problems. You're trying to solve one specific problem, and that's what your hook is, is promising. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. So your hook um, for that book is eight simple steps. So it's not like 7,000 ways to get more blog traffic. It's just like, just do these eight things exactly. and you'll get more traffic. And the, also part of the title is get 100,000 visitors. It's like, it's actually giving you an outcome. So a hook could be a lot of things. It could be an outcome that people want. It could be a, in, in a certain amount of time. It could be a numbered list of some sort. Basically a hook is just, you're presenting a piece of content, but you're, all, you're doing it in a way that promises a certain like, um, it, it, almost an expectation that the person has when they're reading your book. Mm-hmm. They, they, they know if they're opening something, they're going to get eight exact steps or they're going to get a numbered list of, you know, 73 uh, points, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Gotcha. Gotcha. So you're making it really clear from the title what people are getting from the book. And that's, exactly. that's so important. I've seen, I've seen so many nonfiction book titles. It's like, I don't even know what the book is about when I see the title. And I don't even want to, I don't, even if it's free to download, I'm like, I don't want to download that because I don't even know what it's about. 
Exactly. Okay. And uh, yeah, you, exactly. You, you don't want people to guess. You don't want them to just kind of scratch their head and try to figure out what exactly you're offering. Mm -hmm. Totally. You want to be really clear about what you're offering so that people can, so that people have that excitement about it. You know, because if someone's struggling with blog traffic and they see your book title, they're going to be like, wow, this is exciting. You know? Yes. Yeah, exactly. They just have that antici anticipation. They don't even have to know what your book is, a, anything about you. They don't have to know about the reviews. They just see the title and they think well, that could be helpful for me. Exactly, and especially if you're on the, on the Amazon platform, like I price mine at two ninety nine, so it's not it's not like you really have to do a wonderful job of selling it. Just provide a hook. If people want that type of information, they're more than willing to pay that a small amount of money for it. Mm -hmm. Awesome, awesome. That's great. That's great advice, Steve. Well, you know, you shared some amazing tips with us today, and I really appreciate it. Is there any last last words of advice you'd like to give to any authors out there starting or authors who want to sell more books? I would say definitely. To, uh, kind of to recap what I said, just definitely you want to fill out your Amazon author page as, as much as possible, provide like a way for people to go to see what you have to offer. So I, I like to use a uh, what they call link shortener. So instead of actually saying, go find me in the Amazon store, go to, I would say just go to name.com or whatever domain registrar you prefer, register a domain name that actually fits with what you, what kind of describes uh, what, what niche you're in. So for instance, um, if you're in a health niche, it would be tomshealthbooks.com, something, something like that. And then that link will actually automatically redirect to your Amazon store. So basically when you're talking to people, you can just give out that link and it's easy for them to find all that you have to sell. Mm -hmm. And then from there, fill out your author page to the point where you're not talking about yourself, but you're spending a lot of time explaining your viewpoints and niche and how you're in a position to actually sell how you're in the position to actually have authority to sell books on that uh, particular subject. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And I would say, um, again, just uh, get, as, get as many free downloads as possible. And uh, more importantly, try to get as many quality reviews by people who enjoy your content as possible. I, I hate to give it a simplified version, but it's really, for me, I didn't really find it all that difficult because like once you get reviews, Amazon tends to like your books, they associate your books with other books and it's just, they do all the heavy lifting. It's just, you have to, kind of kickstart it yourself mm -hmm. and I would say just don't get bogged down in too many details don't don't try to like you know like I said don't spend three four weeks trying to promote one book just start writing the next one just learn from each one exactly that's so true you know there's no perfect marketing strategy you know yeah you can't do there's nothing perfect you can't write the perfect book you know you can't have a perfect marketing strategy the perfect title like it's just got to be good enough it's got to be great but it doesn't have to be perfect and you'll, you'll never reach perfect yeah that, absolutely yeah Awesome, awesome. Well, thanks so much, Steve. I really appreciate you sharing your knowledge and wisdom with us today. You know, before you go, can you tell us about your, uh, you know, where people can find out more information about you and the work that you're doing? Um, I, I guess I'll get two links. Obviously, I, I blog at stevescottsite.com. Um, pretty much just like you, Tom, every, every couple of weeks I'm always giving away a free book. So if you want to actually get free stuff, uh, come check out my blog. And also my Amazon page is ebooksbysteve.com. Uh, basically applying what I just said, just a redirect link to find my Amazon store. But uh, I would say come to my blog and I'm actually starting a case study about how I'm starting a brand new niche and turning it into actually Kindle books, affiliate marketing, all that sort of stuff, but all from the scratch. So if they want to check out that as well, they might be interested in checking my blog. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thanks to you. I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, thanks. It's been a lot of fun. Awesome. Have a great day. Thanks. Hey there, it's Tom Corsonals again. I hope you love the show today with Steve Scott. I uh, hope you got some great, really valuable information out of this interview. I hope you can apply it. I hope you can go out there and become an international best-selling Amazon Kindle author as well. And we want to hear your success stories. So, you know, if you've used this information from these interviews or from the Kindle Publishing Bible series, you know, please post your comments below. We would love to hear it. Uh, we're so excited uh, to do anything we can to help you and support you on your journey to becoming a best-selling author. So, have an incredible day and. Uh, just want to let you know, I have a new book out, it's called the Amazon Analytics Bible. And uh, in this book, I share this little secret I stumbled upon by complete accident. I was inserting uh, images into my uh, Kindle book descriptions, and I found out if I put a tracking link in there, I could actually track all the traffic to my book page. And so in the book, I, I detail the strategy in detail. I'll show you how to track all the traffic to your Amazon book page. And so that's the way you can actually uh, measure your sales conversion rate on your Amazon book page and then you can test and tweak your book description, your headlines, um, tags, keywords, all kinds of things you can test and tweak now that you have these analytics and uh, using that I've, I've increased my uh, conversion rate on my Amazon book pages from about 11% to 19%. It's like a 67% increase in sales 
just from using this little Amazon analytics tracking method that I stumbled on by complete accident. So the book is incredible. I think you're going to love it. Uh, it's at 99 cents right now, only for the next two more days. So grab it as soon as you can. Uh, then the price is going to go up. Um, even then, it's just an incredible deal. You're going to love it. Okay. Uh, next week, we'll have another interview with another best-selling Kindle author. You're going to love it. Okay. Stay tuned. And I'll see you then. Take care.